That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of adventure with Richard Widmark as your host. Here's a preview. I smuggle armaments all over the China Sea. It's, it's very good business. I pick them up cheap in Vietnam. The whole country is knee-deep in guns the American Army threw away. I run them to Sumatra, Malaysia, Celebes, Mindanao, you name it. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Lucky? Yeah, I was lucky. It happened in my own living room, and Rusty knew how to do CPR. What's that? Uh, let's see, uh... CPR stands for Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation, and Rusty learned it at school. They teach him how to do chest compression and mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing for people who've had heart attacks with electric shocks. You mean your kid saved your life? Well, he kept me going until the ambulance arrived. I probably wouldn't be here now if Rusty hadn't known CPR. Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation, or CPR, was pioneered and developed by the American Heart Association to sustain lives until advanced cardiac support arrives. A person using CPR pumps blood for a heart that has stopped and breathes for lungs that can't. The American Heart Association wants everyone to learn CPR. Contact us to find out where and when CPR is taught in your community. We're fighting for your life. This is Richard Widmark. Pirates? They're all dead and gone, most of them on the gallows, everyone knows that. Blackbeard Keach, Long Ben Avery, Bart Roberts, and all the other great names. They used the cutlass, and they sailed out of Hispaniola in the Caribbean Sea. And they flew the skull and crossbones. True. So, piracy died out when the 17th century died. False. Today, piracy is just as rampant as it ever was. The locale has changed and the weapons have changed. They work in the South China Seas now. And instead of wooden sailing ships and the cutlass, they use fast motor launches equipped with very modern weapons. They prey on fishing boats, freighters, trawlers, anything that happens to be passing by and just might have a worthwhile cargo on board. Like this typical little fishing trawler that's on its way south in those waters now, with an American couple on board sampling the local color. Nice people, with good and valid reasons to be there. Two innocents in a world that isn't really theirs. Who don't know that just over the horizon, there's another vessel lying in wait for them. A fast vessel, a deadly vessel, a vessel armed to the teeth. Another thing they don't know, on board their little fishing boat is another cargo. A cargo that no one is supposed to know anything about. The stage is set. The predator is waiting, ready to pounce on that fishing boat with its two American innocents aboard. And that's only the beginning of our story. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Tough Guy, by Alan Caillou. Our star, John Daner. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where value is your byword. Sears, where America shops. Clinging jerseys, tight satin tops, they only look good if they hug your body smoothly. Sears Best Abra Light helps you and your clothes look good. How? Abra Light has no seam cuffs and straps adjust in the back so you look great up front. Whatever you do, whether it's dashing around town or simmering with disco fever in that slinky dress, it's flattering fun with the Sears Abra Light. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. Understand you type fast. Yes. Yeah. Accurate? Well... That's okay. You'll be typing on Sears' exclusive corrector electric typewriter with easy correction and more. It's Sears Best. Try typing Sears' corrector typewriter. Whoops. Now, first, Sears is S-E-A-R-S, -E not Z. So, backspace to the incorrect letter. Tap the correction key. Now the mistake is blocked out. Next, type the correct letter. Then proceed. Yes, Daddy. 
spring is a playground of texture at Sears Junior Bazaar. Our classic blazer is touchable in cotton and polyester terry. Push the collar and the sleeves up, wrap it close, or let it breeze open. Slip a saucy pointel top underneath and you've got contrast. Or let each go solo in the sunshine. Finish with crisp coolness in polyester and cotton, poplin wrap skirts, and pleated pants. All mix and matchable in neutral and earthy tones from Junior Bazaar at most larger Sears retail stores. On board that little fishing boat in the South China Seas, Susan and Frank Mallory, our unsuspecting American couple, are going about their innocent business. In just a few moments, they'll be joined on deck by Harry Bennett, our hero, whose business is not quite so innocent. Susan. Over here, darling. Nope, over here. We have to finish this damn article. Pull up a box and be comfortable. Got your pad? Where was I at? Your last masterly phrase was, The Romance of Somerset Mom and Sir Thomas Raffles. That was about Singapore and Bangkok. Hmm. And I made a note. You wanted to talk about Angkor Wat. What did I want to say about Angkor Wat? We can't even go there. Ah, yes, that was it. Are we ready? Pencil poised. Ah. Unhappily, Southeast Asia's most important tourist attraction, the spectacular ruins of Angkor Wat, are in Cambodia, now in the grip of the bloody Khmer Rouge. <laughs> Darling, you cannot say bloody in a respectable Sunday newspaper. Uh, the bloodthirsty Khmer Rouge. Okay. The whole of Cambodia is very definitely uh, off limits. No, make that uh, not a safe place to be. But now, for four peaceful and idyllic days... Uh, how many L's in idyllic? I don't know. Make a stab at it. Let the editor worry about it. For four peaceful and idyllic days, we are sailing the serene blue waters of the Gulf of Thailand, dotted with lush green islands of incomparable beauty, overgrown with jungle, palm trees leaning out over water that laps gently at their shores. Well, good morning, Mr. Bennett. Uh, and to you, Miss Mallory. Mr. Mallory? Hi. Uh, where were we? The water was gently lapping. Ah. The islands are rugged and mostly uninhabited, and each one of them is perhaps the nearest thing to paradise uh, Earth has ever seen. No. Each one of them is a paradise on Earth. Baloney. Uh, beg pardon, Mr. Bennett? <laughs> The lies you people tell to make a buck. I don't quite know what you mean by that, Bennett. I mean, just look at them. If you've any appreciation of geographical splendor at all... Ever hear the Khmer Rouge, Mr. Mallory? Naturally, they're in Cambodia. Cambodia happens to lie at least 140 miles to starboard, uh, port, uh, on our left. 160 miles to starboard, actually. Well, then... For nearly a year now, the Khmer Rouge government has been claiming jurisdiction over 200 miles of territorial waters. I know that, too, and nobody has recognized that claim. Nobody. Except the Khmer Rouge themselves. Well, I'm sure we need not expect trouble from the Cambodian Navy. What Navy? All they've got is a handful of gunboats. Well, there you are, hoisted on your own petard. Plus... An awful lot of pirates. Oh, pirates. What balderdash. Who ever heard of pirates in the 20th century? Mr. Mallory, in my business, we get to hear a lot of things that don't really come under the heading of general knowledge. Like last year alone, there were 180-something hijackings in the South China Seas. Buccaneers, privateers, I don't care what you call them. More than half of them, the Khmer Rouge. Sort of uh, officially sanctioned piracy helps to maintain that tough image they like to present. In my business, they're a real menace, believe me. In your business? Uh, I don't think you ever told us what your business might be, Mr. Bennett. I'm a gun runner. You're a what? I gun smuggle runner. armaments all over the China Sea. It's, it's very good business. I pick them up cheap in Vietnam. The whole country is knee-deep in guns the American army threw away. Now, we have a sales pitch. Slightly used guns for sale. Excellent condition. Only dropped once. I run them to Sumatra, Malaysia, Celebes, Mindanao, you name it. You see those crates in the stern? They're mine. 
12 tons of automatic rifles and M79 grenade launchers. Going to bring me a whole lot of money. That doesn't sound to me like a very worthy occupation, Mr. Bennett. Oh, I don't know about that. It's no worse than yours. And what the hell is that supposed to mean? I write travel articles for one of the most respected newspapers in America. Yeah, I heard. Lush green islands, geographical splendor, the gentle surf. You write enough of that kind of junk, the next thing anyone knows, your paradise on Earth is a Holiday Inn and a Big Mac. The natives are put to work weaving baskets. The place gets to be polluted with fast food service and Bermuda shorts, styrofoam cups, non-biodegradable plastic bags all over the beaches. Believe me, I've seen what a travel writer with a gray flannel mouth can do in a surprisingly short time. I used to live on an island in the Andaman Sea once. Now it's a tourist resort, not fit for human habitation. Now, you're a very screwed up kind of gun runner, aren't you? No, I'm just a down to earth kind of guy. Kind of a guy who likes. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. Hey. Hey, cut that out. Captain. Captain Sarotani. I am sorry, Mr. Bennett. Hey, what the hell goes on? Those are my crates. Hey, there's $50,000 worth of We are being chased, Mr. Bennett. You see? Just a speck on the horizon. And in a very few minutes, it will be alongside us. Give me your glasses. Oh, man. I see what you mean. I have to jettison the deck cargo. All of it. It might drive us enough so we can outrun him. Oh, shut up, Tani. There's no way you're ever going to outrun that launch. Our family is growing pretty big these days. We've got family members in nine different states, and Sear sure comes in handy. We can select gifts at the Sears near us, then bring them along on visits to our daughter in Seattle and my brother in Miami. And if what we bought isn't just right for them, they go to the Sears near them and exchange it. That's Sears. In their stores or through the catalog, Sears is where America shops. The word's out and spreading fast about the jeans from Sears Men's Store that grow old beautifully. It's a sure sign they're feeling fine and feeling good. For the denim that keeps going strong a long time. Get them trim cut, regular cut, even get them free washed. The jeans that grow old beautifully. Now at most Sears retail stores. baby's room. Furnish it with the quaintness and charm of Sears Jenny Lynn's crib, dresser, and chest. Your baby will be secure in our old-fashioned crib built with high sides and a safety drop-side latch. And each handsome maple color piece comes in a non-toxic finish. Sears Jenny Lynn dresser and chest is furniture that will adapt gracefully as baby grows older, too. So visit us soon, because Sears has baby buys bundled up. Available at most Sears retail stores. I have to get us on the deck cargo, order it. He might right on us enough so we can outrun him. Oh, shut up, Tani. There's no way you're ever going to outrun that launch. What's our speed? Oh, seven knots. No, he's got better than 30. I still do not want our cargo to fall into their hands. You know whose boat that is? I know it. It's General Kat Kim. And it's not our cargo, it's mine. I have a small piece of it, I think. It is hard for me, too. Yeah. Anything on board you can buy them off with? No. And I would not try. You'd better, or he'll sink you. I will fight him. Well, I guess it's your privilege to cut your own throat, Skip. I have 11 good riflemen on board. The moment he throws out his grappling hooks and his boarding nets, we start to fight. Yeah. Great. Of course, he'll have 30 men aboard, armed to the teeth, automatic rifles, more grenades than he can shake a stick at, anti-tank guns. You'd be surprised what an anti-tank gun can do with the wooden hull of a sailing boat. How much cash do you have on board? Oh, about uh, $500, American money. Well, I've got about 2000 It's not enough, is it? No. No, it is not enough. He would have seen by now that we are throwing your guns overboard. He would not like that. It means I have to fight. I suggest you take the other two passengers below decks. Yeah. 
Mr. Bannock. If I do not see you again... You bet. You're a good guy, Sarah Connie. Mr. Bennett, what's happening? Why are they throwing all these crates overboard? Uh, what, what's that boat out there? I really hate to have to tell you this, but on one of your lush green islands out there in this paradise on Earth, there lives a pirate named Hot Kim. Now, once upon a time... Harry, for Once upon a time, there was this pirate, you see? Please, Harry. Oh. We're being chased, Susan, by a notorious and murderous pirate named Hot Kim. Calls himself a general because he used to be a mess sergeant in the Cambodian army before he went over to the Khmer Rouge. He runs a gang of Lascars, Dayaks, Sumatrans, Ebons, 30, 40 of them. What Frank here might call a motley crew of cutthroats. He's probably heard about my cargo. There aren't too many secrets in these waters. But the skipper decided to throw it all overboard, and that was a mistake. He's a nice guy, but he's not too bright, you know what I mean? I can never figure out why nice guys are never smart. Any minute now, Cut Kim will be coming alongside, and Captain Saro Tani has decided he's going to try and fight him off. Another mistake. I did tell you, didn't I? He's not too bright. So, right now, the three of us are going below to sweat this out the best way we can. Yeah. Oh. Maybe we better hurry. Yeah. Dear Lord, what do we do? Keep away from that porthole, Susan, for one thing. Let me look. I learned how to dodge bullets a long time ago. Once you know how, it's real easy. You just keep your eye on the ball and then duck when it gets real close. Susan, darling, I don't... I don't really know what to say to you. Frank, I'm scared. I'm scared, too. <laughs> There go the grappling irons and the boarding nets. Hey, hey, this is a real classic operation. You know that? Susan, my love, if anything happens to you, I, I, I don't know about but... Harry! Mr. Bennett! I like the Harry better. What is it, honey? What's going to happen to us now? I wish I knew the answer to that. I really do. All I can tell you is that General Cot Kim. He's really something else. He's got about as many nice qualities as a frog has feathers. It's going to be rough, my friend. What was that, Bennett? Oh, there'll be a lot of that for quite a while now. Was it what it sounded like? Yeah. Oh. They don't get to walk the plank anymore. They just get to be tossed overboard and save a lot of trouble. I mean, in the old days, they had to find the plank first. Like, hey, Rufus, you happen to have a plank lying around someplace I can borrow? And then it had to be lashed down with ropes. And all that business of shoving the point of a cutlass into the small of the victim's back. I mean, it took time and trouble. They do it the easy way now. Just throw the poor prune overboard. You really are a tough guy, aren't you, Benny? No, I keep telling you. I'm just a very pragmatic sort of fellow. Harry, will they leave us alone? I'm afraid I have to say I doubt that very much. Oh. <laughs> See what I mean? Master Bennett, you come now long me? Yeah, that's what I figured. You know, cut him. Him like to make him long talk you. Sit tight, boys and girls. I'll go and have a chat with my good friend, the general. I'll be back, I hope. Your good friend? Right now, honey, I certainly don't want him for an enemy. Uh, I'll see you. Frank, what's going to happen to us? Darling, I, I don't know. Should we perhaps pray? As Harry would say, Frank, yeah. <laughs> Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. Here's Annie. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow. Annie. Annie Here's is me. here. She's the girl who's taken New York and London by storm. Annie is the biggest, brightest, hooray happiest musical ever. Most of all, Annie brings back fun and good times. Annie has it all. Billionaires, 
plucky orphans, arch villains, lovable mutts, Christmas morning, plus President Roosevelt, and every award going. It's got singing, dancing, laughing and crying, and love all over the place. See Annie, bring the whole family from six to cynics, because everybody loves Annie. Coming to the Erie Crown Theater April 12th through June 9th. Tickets at the Erie Crown box office and all Ticketron outlets. For phone reservations, call 791-6000. to be a member of a great team, and I'm equally proud of my family, Stormy, my wife, and our two children. They're both healthy, normal kids, but you know, there are some children in this world, in your neighborhood, who are not so lucky. They were born with handicaps, injured in accidents, or disabled by illness. All they want is an equal chance with other children to work, to play, to learn, and to feel they will have a place in the world when they grow up. The Easter Seal Society is preparing both children and adults for tomorrow, rehabilitating them, giving them a chance to become self-respecting citizens. That's why I support the work of Easter Seals. As a member of the National Easter Seal Sports Council, we hope you support your local Easter Seals program. It's a great way to help handicapped people. Below decks on the captured fishing boat, Susan and Frank Mallory are just beginning to realize the perils they face in the presence of Cot Kim and his pirate crew. Harry Bennett, on the other hand, seems relatively undisturbed. Mr. Bennett, what a great pleasure to see you again. Do please sit down. Well, I... uh... General... You're looking fit and well. Oh, you really think so? I've been losing weight lately, and it worries me. I'm down to 250 pounds. Well, that's a nice round figure. How kind of you to say so. But I'm very angry with you, Mr. Bennett. I wanted your cargo so badly, and you threw it overboard. I'm wondering if I should do the same to you. Well, now, wait a minute, General. Hold it right there. I had $50,000 invested in that merchandise. Losing it wasn't my idea at all. Ah, then it was Captain Sarotani who ordered this terrible thing? Oh, no. It wasn't Sarotani either. As a matter of honest fact, I don't know who it was. Hmm. I said to the skipper the moment we saw your boat, and that, that's really a very beautiful boat. Uh-huh. I said, Sarotani... That's our old friend, General Cut Kim. And, uh, why don't we give him all this merchandise just to show our solidarity with the Khmer Rouge? And he said, and Mr. Bennett, he said, what a splendid idea. Let's do that. I always thought very highly, he said, of General Cut Kim. But, uh, Mm -hmm. then a couple of Lascars and the crew, or maybe they were Dayaks, uh, who knows, they started throwing our crates overboard, and I honestly don't know which ones they were, probably among all those poor pilgrims who walked the plank already. Uh-huh. And we tried to stop them, Sarotani and I, but they had rifles. So there really wasn't much we could do to stop them. Well, what a fascinating story. I still think I have to feed you to the lobsters. That is not really a very good idea, General. Oh, and why not? The fact that you tried so hard to get my guns indicates to me that you may be running short of the weapons you need. If that's so, General, there's only one man in these waters can resupply you, and that's me. You just can't afford to knock me off. Hmm. A persuasive argument, by no means decisive, but persuasive, yes. Who are the two other passengers on board of the ship? His name is Frank Mallory, a famous travel writer. The girl is his wife, husband-wife team. It's kind of mandatory in their business. Middle America and all that jazz. She's a very pretty little lady, isn't she? Uh... Does his paper have money? Lots of money? Uh... Yes. His paper has lots of money. That's seven bodies thrown overboard I counted Yes, but we're still alive, Susan And while there's life, there's hope Frank, you really know how to coin a phrase Well, 
Everybody okay? Uh, so far, yes. What's happening, Mr. Bennett? Well, uh, here. Where do you keep the liquor in this cabin? I really need a long slug of good bourbon. We don't drink, Mr. Bennett. Oh. Well, that figures, I guess. All right, I'll tell you what's happening. The general has decided to take you both to his lush green island hideout where the waters gently lap, etc., etc. He's got a sort of beat-up camp there, just a mess of wooden huts. Not your tourist paradise at all, Mallory. And somehow or other, don't ask me how, he figures that he can get in touch with your paper and hit them for a ransom. Ah, uh, will they pay it? Well, uh, of course they'll pay it, but that isn't the point. The point is, I, I think... mean, if they think your writing is as bad as I think it is, they just may not bother. They happen to believe, and I agree with them, that I am very good at what I do. Well, so that's okay, then. I was worried there for a little while. But, Harry, how long will that take? Yeah. You hit the nail right on the head there, honey. Though maybe obscurely and with commendable discretion. Well, he'll have to send a radio message. He can't do that from his island. And Phnom Penh has been out of touch with the rest of the world for a long time. So, he'll have to send it to Bangkok. Say, two, three days. Then how long will your publisher haggle over the price? Two weeks? A few days to get the cash to him? You should be out of there in a month or so. A month? As prisoners of that monster? Oh, Harry, please help us. Honey, don't throw those baby blue eyes at me like that. It won't work. Harry, as a fellow American... Oh, come on, don't give me that jazz. You want a shoulder to cry on? You as your wife. She's a lot tougher than you are. And that's what she's there for. If it's not too much trouble for you, as a man who knows this this seamy side of life... Oh, Frank, You no. might at least tell us what to do. I'll tell you what not to do. If you value your life, Mallory, go along with anything the general wants. He'll want your money. Hand it over without protest. He'll want your cameras. Give them to him. He'll want your fancy gold watch. Give him that, too, when he asks for it. Now, if you'll forgive me, Captain Sarotani... Much to my surprise, is still alive, and he dumped fifty thousand dollars of mine overboard. I figure the least that little pronk owes me is a drink. Pronk? I don't think I know the word. Any pronk knows what a pronk is. Yeah. And the general just might want your wife too, Frank. He thinks she's real cute, and she is. You know that? I'll see you. Eight of them. Darling, I don't, I don't know. I, I really don't know what I can say to you. A writer. And a damn good one. And you never know what to say, do you? Darling, perhaps it's not as bad as it seems to be. We're still alive. And while there's life, so help me, Frank. If you say that again, I'll kill you. He likes me. Do you understand what that means? You me, fella. Go now. Throw away this fella boat. Got new fella ship. New fella time run run. Me get gun machine. Did you understand any of that? I understand a machine gun when I see it. So let's go. <laughs> Mallory, Mrs. Mallory, over the gangplank, onto my ship now. <laughs> Both engines full ahead. Who follow the scene? Full ahead. All in general. I'm coming with you. <laughs> Mr. Bennett, I am not taking you prisoner. I have enough headaches. I do not need more. Like I said, General, you never know when you might need me. Why you make my life so complicated? Harry, thank you. I just didn't want to be left behind on that damn boat. Almost no one left to handle her except poor old Sarotani. The little pronks and drowning his sorrows in the worst whiskey I ever drank in my life. May I add my thanks to Mr. Bennett? I realize that you're volunteering to share our dangers, and I, too, am deeply grateful. What dangers? I keep telling everybody the general just can't afford to kill me. I might be very valuable to him one day. At least I'm trying hard to persuade myself that maybe that's the way it lies. I could be... Oh, no! 
No. They blew it up. Now, why should he want to do a thing like that? There were men still left alive on that boat. Yeah. Sarotani was one of them. Sarotani fought him. Don't ever try and apply good old American philosophies to people like the Khmer Rouge, Frank. They just don't think the way we do. We're a new country. Cut Kim dynamited that boat because of one of the oldest emotions in history that maybe we don't understand too good. Hatred. Just pure hatred. Poor old Sarotani. He was a real nice little guy. I only spoke to him once. He said in that funny little way he had of talking. I promise you, Mises. He called me Mises. <laughs> You'll have a happy voyage on my ship. <laughs> oh, God. And what happens now, Harry? Why is it every time you want to put me down, Frank, you call me Mr. Bennett? And when you're good and scared, it's Harry. What happens now, Mr. Bennett? Now we're headed for wherever the general wants to take us, for whatever he wants to do with us. We have to roll with it, Frank. Just roll with it. We roll around enough. We might just get out of this alive. Don't make book on it, but we might. Yeah. Hey, look. In here, inside this stylish man's dress shirt. I'm a Sears Value dress shirt label, just popping with pride. Because Sears Value dress shirts are sure to be popular for a number of reasons. They have fashion spread collars, come in classic patterns and solids in short sleeves. You'll appreciate the permapressed polyester or polyester cotton blends for easy care. Plus, at low value prices, what a buy. Just look for me, the Value dress shirt label at Sears Men's Store, where style, sense, and satisfaction combine to label me right for you. Hurry, hurry, step right up to most Sears retail stores for the Sears National Hardware Week sale. Take aim for special savings on these items. Save $40 on a fully automatic garage door opener. Save $10 to $15 on several handy and versatile bathroom storage cabinets. Get $40 off a 14-inch lightweight chainsaw with its own carrying case. Take home big savings. Real straight shooting at the Sears National Hardware Week sale. Hurry, hurry. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. What's the best way to save on new clothes? Sew them. Start by saving $40 on a Kenmore sewing machine at Sears with a convertible free arm for narrow sleeves, cuffs, and legs, a built-in button holder, even six stretch stitches. This free arm Kenmore, just $199.95, and save $30 on a wood veneer sewing cabinet. Sale ends March 31st. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. Solid as Sears. Richard Widmark again. And here's the concluding act of The Tough Guy. Well, here we are. Just a simple hut, I'm afraid. Mm, simple is right. But really quite adequate. A mat to sleep on, a jug of water, a bottle of whiskey. Uh, what more can anyone want? We'll bring you food from time to time as long as you behave yourselves. And how long? How long will we be here, General? I wonder that, too. Well, if all the comforts of home are taken care of, why don't you and I have a talk, General Cut Kim? I've got a proposition that might interest you. Yes, I rather thought you would have. Why don't we go to my own hut? Hang in there, folks. I'll be back. <laughs> Got this place fixed up real good. Any fool can be uncomfortable, Mr. Bennett. A tot of rum? <laughs> that sounds like a hell of a good idea, General. You had a proposition in mind, I think. Sure enough. Oh. Cheers, General. Your health, Mr. Bennett. And uh long life. <laughs> long life? Well, under the circumstances, that might just be a very propitious thing to drink to, so I'll drink to it. Mm. Hey, we have something in common, you and I. Did you know that? Oh, and what might that be, Mr. Bennett? We both live right on the edge of rapid extinction. <laughs> How about that? 
How much ransom are you going to ask for Frank Mallory? I thought a million dollars would be nice. They won't pay it. They'll just write him off. Half a million? No. A quarter? No. But surely, 100,000? Keep moving down. You'll get there. But whatever it is, it'll take an awful long time. They'll haggle over the price for six months at the very least. That doesn't seem very long. After all, it's not only Mr. Mallory, is it? Really, his wife is a very attractive young woman. You don't know our American women, General. In a week, Susan Mallory would get into your hair so deep you go bald trying to get rid of her. Ah, uh, let me throw a more sensible alternative at you and... Uh, oh, I could, uh, could I have another ton of room, please? Of course. Yeah. Uh, I will give you $50,000 worth of guns and ammunition, quality merchandise for the pair of them, and it won't take more than two days. I've got a whole bunch of automatic rifles and stuff tucked away in Bangkok, just waiting for someone like you to put them to good use. Now, uh, doesn't that sound like a good idea? Hmm. If you were to double that offer, perhaps? Oh, no, no, I can't afford to do that. The Mallorys don't really mean that much to me. But I, uh... I will throw in a very fat bonus. You know about the Queen of the Orient? I don't believe I do, Mr. Bennett. I didn't think so. It's a very hush-hush operation. And she's a trawler out of Bangkok, smuggling half a million bucks in American cigarettes to Sarawak on her way south right now. Her speed is about ten knots. A few guns on board, but not too many. I need to know her schedule, her route. Do we have a deal? $75,000 worth of automatic rifles with their ammunition and the two hostages will be released into your custody. We have a deal. And a dinghy to take us across the bay to Thailand. Agreed. The Queen of the Orient will be passing the island of Ban Hoi at 10 o'clock tonight. Now, that's only 52 miles from here. She'll be a sitting duck for you. Now, you see what a nice guy I am? When can we leave? A we? Well, I'm not leaving the island without them. Oh, but that is absurd. If I let you all go, I'll never see any of you again. You must know, General, my business is founded on trust. I couldn't operate it otherwise. I can't afford to double-cross you. <laughs> I make my living in these waters. Yes, that is true, of course. Uh, why don't we have another drink and talk about that? Ah, uh, I always knew you were a good guy at heart. You think Harry Bennett knew that our boat was going to be dynamited? Is that why he left it so unexpectedly? No. It was to help us, Frank. I'm sure of it. Well, I wish I could be. I don't like the way that so-called general was looking you over like a cannibal choosing the cut he wants. Well, it looks like all your troubles might be over. Oh? I made a deal with the general. He's trading you off for some merchandise, giving us a dinghy to take us to Bangkok where my warehouse is hidden. Oh. You think you can help me sail it, Frank? A lot of very nasty reefs to look out for, surface coral, stuff like that. Oh, Harry, I don't know how we can ever think... When do we leave? Right now. It's such a relief. I've been so, so terribly scared. Uh, well, there's, there's something I maybe ought to tell you. Uh, the dinghy is ready, Mr. Bennett. I'm sure the two of you can handle it. I can send a man with you if necessary. I'd rather not. I'm a little short-handed just now. We'll be okay. Well, Susan can help out. She's quite handy in a boat. Uh, yes. Well, um, uh... Oh, you didn't tell them, Mr. Bennett... Uh, you stay behind, Mrs. Mallory. Your husband leaves with Mr. Bennett a token of my good faith. You are a token for his. When he returns with the gun... Within 48 hours, honey, don't you worry about you it. You will be released, too. Mm, so that's it. Well, let me tell you something. I am not leaving this island without my wife. Do you think I'm crazy? Frank, you have to play this the way I see it, or none of us will get out of here alive. How very true. No way. Frank, if I have to knock you out cold and carry you down to the boat, that's what I'm going to do. I will not leave this island without Susan. That's all there is to it. Nothing I can do to convince you? You really think that I... <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, what an impetuous yeah. man you are, Mr. Bennett. Okay. Frank, up you go. Ooh, he, he carries a lot of weight around with him, doesn't he? Harry, yeah. you can't leave me alone with this monster. You can't. Don't worry, honey. Uh, Everything is going to be fine. Uh, uh, I'll see you. Regrettably, I too must leave you, Mrs. Mallory. But I will be back. <laughs> leave Susan behind. And that's really commendable. Nice thought. We're not leaving her behind, so get up off the ground and we'll do what we have to do to get it ready. Uh, we're, we're not... We're not leaving... I'm going to say that again. We're all leaving together. I don't understand. Understanding is not a thing you're very good at, Frank. you got to admit that. Now listen, the dinghy the general was kind enough to give us, you and me, uh, it's down in the surf there. You think you can walk that far? Because to tell you the truth, Frank, there's just so much of you to lug around tonight. You're the one that doesn't understand. Now, how many times do I have to tell you I simply will not... I be... shut up and listen to me. We sail around the headland in the dinghy. We pull into shore and land again. Then we go grab her. We go grab her? Thirty or forty armed savages won't stop her? Right. They'll be leaving any minute now. Now, you can't be sure of that. Oh, I can. Come on. The general is chasing a non-existent trawler loaded down with non-existent cigarettes. They're very greedy, these pirates. He won't be able to resist them. He knows they're armed, so he'll take almost every man he's got. He'll leave just a couple of guards to watch Susan. He knows she can't get off the island. Okay, into the dinghy. There. Now, grab the tiller. What? The tiller is that wooden handle there, Frank. Okay. The expression of your anticipatory pleasure is gratifying, dear lady, but I fear I must keep you waiting just a few hours longer. I have work to do. There will be two men guarding you, and there is no way off the island, so why don't you just wait patiently for my return? Take your hands off me, you savage! <laughs> I never understand why American women worry so much about losing their virtue. It's not a matter of losing it, General. It's who we lose it to. I'll bring you back some American cigarettes. And I'm sure we'll quickly become very close friends. <laughs> a little freeway, Frank. Uh, there goes Scott Kim's launch now. Okay. Let's drop the anchor. When we get back ashore, I go for the guards. You smash your way into that hut. Grab Susan, bring her back here to the boat. Fast. Get it? Got it. Good. <laughs> Okay. Get that damn sail up. Quick. Right. Forget it. Just lie down, both of you. What? I thought you took care of those guards. The guards are out cold. That's going to be his cooks and bottle washers. I didn't figure on them. Uh, Harry! Oh, my God, you're hit. Now, uh, straight out to sea. Mr. Mallory, run. Run with the wind. How bad he hurt, Susan? Bad. Oh, me. You really think... I think I've never been shot at before. Yeah. You're going to make it okay, Harry? You better believe it. What did you say you were, Harry? Pragmatic? I mean... You die on us now... After all you've done, I, I swear I'll never speak to you again. Hey, hey, hey. 
Nothing to cry about, honey. We're... We're on our way home. On our way home. Yeah. Nearly everyone at our party mentioned our new Sears Dream Supreme carpeting. Didn't anyone say anything about my rutabaga dip? Marvin said Dream Supreme looks so thick and luxurious. He loved its velvety soft plush pile. What about my rutabaga dip? Eloise adored the color. Of my rutabaga dip. I told her that avocado lime is just one of Dream Supreme's 20 lustrous colors, and when Doris heard that Dream Supreme is so reasonably priced and treated with Scotchgard brand fabric protector... Okay, what about my tuna fish upside down cake? Dream Supreme carpeting in most larger Sears retail stores. Hurry, hurry, step right up to most Sears retail stores for the Sears National Hardware Week sale. Take aim for special savings on these items. Save 40% on total regular separate catalog prices for a 70-piece mechanics tool set. Now just $59.99. Save $40 on a 5-horsepower rototiller and $25 off an attractive 20-inch bathroom vanity and top. Take home big savings. It's Sears National Hardware Week sale. Hurry, hurry. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Join millions of Americans and shop the easy way with a Sears credit card. All you do to apply is call toll-free 800-526-0444. It's your entry to shopping convenience and quality merchandise. Your card will be accepted at over 3,600 Sears stores across the nation. And you can choose from over 100,000 Sears products and services. Even use it for your catalog orders. In the store or over the phone, just say charge it. Call 800-526-0444. New Jersey residents call 800-652-2777 for your Sears credit card. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops. The Tough Guy was written by Alan Caillou, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Richard Widmark. Our star was John Daner. Also heard were Vic Perrin, Nancy Bell Fuller, Alan Caillou, Marvin Miller, and Don Diamond. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. Associate Director of Sears Radio Theater is Ken McManus. Sound effects were created by Bud Tollefson, Joanne Thompson is production supervisor, and the recording engineers are Joe Wachter and Hal McDonald. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Sir, I'm here at JFK Airport to ask about foreign vacations. I can't talk about it. It was terrible. Oh, gosh, you have a great tan, sir. <laughs> and your wife there, she looks spectacular. You must have had a great time. I must have. It was your fault, Harry. You had to try to bring back the bird eggs. It was so embarrassing. And what was the high point of your foreign vacation, ma'am? Well, it wasn't when the agricultural inspector confiscated the carton of steaks Harry blew all that money on. Uh, well, that must have been very exciting. He took away my teddy bear stuffed with straw. Oh, <laughs> sir, why would he do that? I don't know. I know, because certain foods, plants, and animal products are restricted or prohibited. Oh? Well, they could bring a disease or pest to the U.S. that could cause an epidemic. Gosh. Even just one could. Myrtle, did you say pest? Uh-huh. He confiscated a pest? Yes. Then why didn't he confiscate you, Myrtle? Even one can hurt. Right for traveler's tips. A free booklet that tells you the law. Write traveler's tips, USDA, Washington, 20250. I'll bet my teddy misses me. One of the kids wake up with a fever and cough? Run out to White Hand for aspirin and cough medicine. The Kilkenny's sing for Schlitz. Beer makes it good. Schlitz makes it great. Irish we had. A Schlitz so red. Beer makes it good. Schlitz makes it great. Irish we had. A Schlitz so red. Michael me bucko, it's St. Paddy's Day. And as your own guardian leprechaun, I'm here to grant you three wishes. Oh, glory. First... I, I, I wish I had a Schlitz. And a wise choice, too. Eleven million times a day, America reaches for a Schlitz. Eleven million Schlitz? Well, how about that now? Now? Okay. That's your second wish. Uh, but, 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 but... When it comes to beer, there's no debate. When I wish for beer, I wish for Schlitz. This makes it great. I wish for Schlitz. There's no debate. 
I wish the day would last all year. This makes it great. Happy St. Patrick's Day, Chicago, from Schlitz, bottled by the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company, Milwaukee. Next Monday, Sears Radio Theater will be a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Let's listen. I found him the same way I found that smelly steer out there. Only he ain't worth $15. Saving a man's life is like putting a brand on him. He's your doggy, like it or not. Be sure and tune in next Monday to the Sears Radio Theater.